Welcome to the e-commerce coffee break podcast. In today's episode, we discuss the 80-20 rule together with fractional marketing and how this can grow your business. Joining me on the show is Thorsten Lüdecke, founder and managing director at myteaminkapetown.com. So let's get started. Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break podcast. Today I have a bit of a different episode than the usual episodes. We want to talk about the 80-20 rule and how it can grow your business. Now, with me on the show, I have Thorsten Lüdecke, and he is not a normal guest. He is a friend of mine and also a business partner of mine, and he will introduce himself in a second. But the topic overall, the Pareto Principle 80-20 rule, also known as the law of vital of the vital few, is just a reminder on how what you should focus into your business. So we will dive into this right now. Let me welcome Thorsten to the show. Hi, Thorsten. How are you today? I'm very well. Thank you very much, Klaus, and thanks for having me here. It's uh, actually fun to talk to you in this setting because, as you just mentioned, we are friends, so normally it's a little different when we have a conversation together. But I'm glad that we can share some knowledge here and hopefully get some of your listeners inspired about you know how to move their business to the next level because I guess, you know, from what I know about the podcast here, it is all about uh, growing your business, uh, increasing your sales, and obviously, you know, digital marketing is an essential part of that. And so, I'm glad to be here and talk to you about the Pareto principle and how that can help you know people to grow their businesses and their online shops. Right. So Person, about you, me, yes. Yeah. Let yes. me tell them. About, usually, I do the introduction of our guests, but as we are friends, I would like to leave that to you. So, introduce yourself and tell our listeners a bit about your background. Perfect. So my name is Thorsten. Uh, I'm actually a German entrepreneur. Uh, I started my career um, in the recruitment industry. I set up one of the biggest recruitment companies in Europe uh, together with some partners in Belgium and sold the company uh, in the dot-com boom in 2001. And then I decided to move to Cape Town and start various ventures, uh, all based on the idea that uh, you can do a great jobs um, uh, from Cape Town just as well as you can do them from Munich, Vienna or Berlin. So basically, uh, as an entrepreneur, I developed various uh, services that uh, companies could easily outsource without compromising quality. Uh, my main business here in Cape Town is a language agency. So companies that have any language uh, work from copywriting to voiceover, subtitling, simple translations or anything, they come to me, give us the job and we can deliver a 30% cost advantage compared to um, our competitors in Europe. That's basically what I'm doing here. I've been in Cape Town for over 20 years now. I met you, Klaus, I think it's like 12 years ago or 13 years ago here in Cape Town. And uh, you brought in some great ideas um, into my business. And yeah, and then we basically reconnected a couple of years ago uh, to start something new together. But I'm sure we're going to come to that a little later. On the personal, you know, I'm married, I uh, have a beautiful wife. Uh, she's a Qigong teacher. Most of you might not know what Qigong is. It's an Asian form of healing and health, um, which also means it's greatly contributing to my quality of life. Um, and yeah, and I'm an uh, avid traveler, just like you, Klaus. But I think it's this is more about the business side uh, now. And so I'll probably give, leave the questions to you and we can see how we can move this forward. Yeah, let's dive right into it. So obviously, we're both entrepreneurs. Uh, both of us have started a lot of bis different businesses. And as an entrepreneur, you're always focusing on being more productive, on being more effective, on optimizing things. And I think that's where the 80-20 rule plays in and is a huge part of it. Now, for those who do not know the 80-20 rule, also called the Pareto Principle. It's coming from Alfredo Pareto. He was a Italian economist in the 19th century, and he came up with the concept. Maybe toss, tell me a little bit about what you understand about the 80-20 rule. Yeah, the funny thing is uh, he was an economist, but he actually, the insight came from something else. He just you know, observed uh, Italy and he found out that 80% uh, of the land in Italy is owned by only 20% of the people. And then he looked in his garden and he said, well, if I look at my trees, he says that 80% of the fruits are carried by 20% of uh, of the trees. And he continued to look at various things. And this 80-20 rule seemed to pop up, uh, pop up in many, many spheres of his life. And then he and others looked at you know, at business and they discovered similar things. Uh, I mean, most of you, your listeners will know that a lot of the marketing do, they do a lot of the resources they spend 
create very little results. And then there are the few things that they do that you know suddenly bring big results. And that is the 80-20 rule. So it says that 20% of your activities are responsible for 80% of your results. So you might wonder, you know, is it worth doing the other 80% of work if that only brings very, very limited results? And that is uh, you know, what we are also uh, suggesting here to say, okay, look at your business, identify what does make sense, what brings the highest results, and then implement it accordingly you know, to use your resources in the most effective uh, way. And um, yeah, and I think this is this is a principle. Uh, yeah, you can do it on the on the tiniest scale. For example, if you just write a simple uh, Facebook post, you know, once you got the main message right, once you got the graphic right, you've got your targeting right. This is twenty percent of the time, and it's done. Now, if you want to continue forever to find the right color scheme, the perfect you know punctuation here or there or tiny details. You will not attract much more attention. You will not attract much more business, but you're going to spend a lot of time trying to put the perfect things. So that is, I think, in simple words, it's the 80-20 rules. I'm sure a lot of people have heard about it, but very few people, you know, interesting enough, implement it uh, on a daily basis or go through life, through business life, with an awareness of that rule so that they continue to, to put their resources where it really matters. Yeah, 100% right. I think a lot of solopreneurs, startup founders, people who are side hustlers going into business do not have that on their plan on their platter because obviously there's so many things happening every day in a business that's easy to get lost in the day-to-day -day tasks that are out there. So with the 80-20 rule, as you mentioned before, you really need to sit down and go through the tasks that you have in your business and find out what is bringing the results and how can I restructure it. And I want to dive a little bit on a couple of examples to make it easier for our listeners to understand what it is. So one thing, for instance, is that you might have a um, that 20% of software bugs um, cause 80% of customer complaints, for instance. So you need to find out how can I optimize that one. Um, you can have, for instance, outsourcing it at 20%, and you mentioned that 20% of your ad advertising generates 80% of your leads. So you want to focus on that. And then I'm, I'm a big fan because as an entrepreneur, you have to deal sort of with everything, but you have your personal strengths. So you might be good in marketing, you might be good in accounting, whatsoever. And that's what you should fo focus on because that helps you most in a business and the rest you should sort of outsource. And I'm a big fan of that. So I usually look at the 20% that I'm good in and that bring the results and everything else, which is also necessary to do in a business. So you cannot just cut out accounting, for instance, because you don't think it brings any results and you don't like it and you're not good at it. Um, you still have to do it, but you need to find someone who's better than you and outsource the whole, the whole thing. Now, the 80-20 rule is not necessarily 80-20. It can be 70-30, can be 90-10, 99-1, but you really need to find out what it is. Now, going through this this process, or what's what's your approach of um, sitting down and looking at the processes and then really making a, a decision, a call on what to change in a business? How do you do this? I think I think you 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 had a valid point there when you said there are certain things that you're really good at and others you're not so good at, and you will also find that this is true. Um, when you use the twenty, uh, the eighty twenty rule. So, for example, I'm I'm very good at uh, identifying um, where I'm wasting my time and where I'm effective in the areas where I'm good at. Now, that is perfect, and I think all it needs is to go a little bit into the numbers and do a little bit of analytics, and then you know, you will understand what brings the result. What is more difficult is are these areas where you you feel you've got uh, not enough expertise anyway. And um, and where you struggle to understand, that's going to be very, very tough for you to identify the areas where you're wasting your time and resources. So uh, again, you know, if you're smart like Klaus and you outsource these things, it is time to talk to the people you're working with, you know, the people you have outsourced to work with, and ask them to look at what they are doing and ask them to identify where they think their, their, their contribution brings the, the highest results. So so, you know, we can't you know, we can't expect a, a, a solo entrepreneur or you know, a small medium sized uh, enterprise the owners the entrepreneurs we can't expect them you know, to be able to analyze all areas of their business that way but they can at least do the ones that they are responsible for and that they are good at so it is uh, you know, looking at numbers and we today the internet and the, so, and, and the tools we have on the internet offer a lot of analytical tools that we can use to uh, identify 
um, the uh, which what makes sense and what doesn't make sense. But do it for the stuff that you're doing and don't try necessarily to understand all areas of your business. Leave that to the people that are doing the job, whether it's your own employees in the, in your business or uh, the people you've outsourced to. Wow, very well, valid point that you mentioned there. Sometimes it's very difficult to see the forest because of the trees and a fresh set of eyes will help you to find out or just a person that might be another one person in your organization, in your company, looking at a different aspect of your business and telling you what's working and what's not. And then from there going in the 80-20 rule or someone external looking into that. Now, the two of us have come up with a solution on that because specifically in, in certain areas, it's, it's just easier to outsource things and to give it someone else who is either more specialized or just because time is money also can do things cheaper. Um, tell me a little bit about the solution that we came up with. Okay, well, that's a complex question because it covers a couple of your know, ideas that we have put together to make it worthwhile for you know your young entrepreneurs or shop owners um, to, uh, to use this service. Now, the first idea is obviously I mentioned earlier. I live in Cape Town, so all my businesses are operating from Cape Town, and Cape Town has a smart and better cost base. So roughly. 50% of the expenses that you would you know, usually have in, uh, in Western Europe, which means the office uh, uh, spaces are cheaper, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the salaries are cheaper, uh, everything is really just like half the cost here. Uh, so that is one, one pillow of what we are offering. We say, okay, let's operate from Cape Town. The second point is um, that we have uh, observed that a lot of companies feel uneasy when it comes to outsourcing to some random freelancer that they have no control over or just a BPO company where they talk to a, a, um, a client relationship manager, but they don't talk to the people that are actually doing the job. And uh, this is why uh, Klaus and I started a separate business line called My Team in Cape Town, where we basically say, okay, you have a certain profile of people or person you want to recruit. We will find them for you. We will employ them at our company. They will sit in our office, but they are part of your team. So you've got complete control of them. You integrate them, integrate them in your in your meetings, in your online meetings. You talk to them on a daily basis, but they are in a fixed office structure under supervision. So you know, if you've got a freelancer in India, you've got no idea what this guy is doing all day. And if he's sitting in our office, you damn know what's going on. And you always have someone to refer to if there are any issues. It also means you have no problems. So if you're unhappy with this person and we need to go to the retrenchment phase or something like that, that's all our responsibility. You just you know, basically have the benefit of having someone working for you exclusively in a low cost destination. Now, that is the idea that Klaus and I had, you know, um, um, couple of months ago, well, actually, it's, it's a year and a half ago now, and it's flourishing very well. Now, then Klaus came to me and said, look, my clientele, they they are usually smaller companies or just, you know, solo entrepreneurs, and they don't have the resource, the money to pay a full-time marketing manager. And that is where the Pareto principle came on. And we said, well, there's no need to have a full-time marketing manager because, you know, 80% of the results are done in 20% of the time. So rather than hire someone full-time, let us take on you know, experts in their field and they work as fractional marketing managers. That's how we call them. So you buy a fraction of their time, like you know, I don't know, 20 hours a week or 15 hours a week. And in these 15 hours, they work exclusively for you. Now, what does it mean financially? Financially, it means uh, you pay only you know, the, the share of the time that they're working for you. You're also paying far less because they are based in Cape Town. And you have an expert you know, in their field that is supervised. Uh, that is the last bonus uh, that I bring in by uh, our friend and podcast host, Klaus Lauter, who obviously knows a lot about digital marketing. So he is actually uh, looking at the team. He is uh, taking care that everything is fine. He's bringing the great ideas into it. Um, and so, 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 you know, it's not just someone you know, working in, in an empty space. It's someone under great supervision. So that is the concept that we came up with. And uh, the basic idea is the 80-20 rule, because we say you don't need someone that does uh, the stuff that you know, a, a multinational do, uh, does. You, you need limited stuff that creates results. You need to do the basic thing that, that is absolutely necessary to drive your sales. And a fractional marketing manager is more than enough for that. So this is the kind of you know, idea that we think is working. And uh, the fractional marketing manager, because he or she is an expert in their field, 
also will be able to identify very well, you know, what are the things that create results here and what is other things that I'm just doing because, you know, I'm paid 40 hours a week and I have to do something and present something in front of the board. So the idea is we do only what matters. We do it you know, at a fraction of the cost that you would usually pay. And then hopefully we get your sales up and, uh, and, uh, and you'll recommend us to your friends and a business partners. The fun part of is that we are clients of our own company because we, we had this pain point. We had this pain point, okay, we have identified, according to the 80-20 rule, certain areas where we needed help with, but not a full-time person. So we started with that, and now we're basically bringing it out to the world to other entrepreneurs doing the same. So we're not only running the business, we're clients of ourselves, because we still have people that work only part-time for ourselves, but we're offering these to others as well. So who's our perfect customer at the end of the day? I would say the perfect customer is any company that uh, has a high awareness uh, that is imp important to drive sales through digital marketing. Uh, that they understand, you know, no matter how good their product is, they need to sell, 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 and they need to do something in order to get these client leads and to get the sales in. And it's a company that says, I'd love to do it, but, you know, I've got limited resources. And uh, I don't have the expertise to do it myself because I'm very good at other stuff, but you know, I know very little about digital marketing. So they don't have the expertise themselves and they don't have the resources to hire someone expensive full-time at their own office. That is a perfect uh, customer because uh, they, can, they can get the talent here in Cape Town at a fraction of the cost. And uh, they don't need a full-time person because uh, as we all know, there's very few things that actually make a difference. And that is what the uh, the marketing manager here will, will focus on. There's also companies that think, well, damn, you know, I'm just a small business. I would love to take advantage, like all the global players. I mean, all the global players are here in Cape Town, like Amazon. They are a huge centers here. They take advantage of the low cost base. And a small entrepreneur does want to do the same. So if they want to take advantage of their low cost base here, that is an ideal customer. So I think, you know, companies that say, okay, I have a limited resource, a limited budget available and I don't have the expertise to do it all myself, they should be in touch and they should talk to us and uh, what we can do, how a package could look like, and then we can take it from there. Okay. Walk me through the typical onboarding process for a new client. What steps are involved? How long does it usually take to get up and running? Well, basically, it's a call like we are having now, and only with the third person on board, which is the potential client. So they will talk to you and me about their business, about their needs, uh, about the profile of people they are looking for. And they explain a little bit of what they've been doing so far uh, in their marketing field. No worry if they have done very little. We understand that. Um, and uh, then we would uh, we would present them, you know, CVs, possible candidates. And the recruitment decision is the joint decision. So we do the pre-selection here and the search. And But it's ultimately the client that says, yeah, this is the man or the woman I would like to work with. Uh, the whole process can be pretty fast. Um, and uh, then we get started. And, you know, obviously, if we do good work and the client is very happy, then it can be a very long relationship. Now, if the client is unhappy for whatever reason with the actual person we took on, it's also easy for us to replace and to come up with an alternative. But, you know, hopefully we've done uh, the regroupment process well enough that, um, you know, we, that we can evaluate the expertise of that person and that it's a great player and fits well into the team of the client. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about the potential cost savings and the pricing structure that's behind that. Well, it, uh, the, the cost saving depends a little bit on the language needs of your clients. Now, if it's English speaking, it's easy because everybody here speaks English. Now, if you've got clients in uh, in uh, in Spain or if, you're, if you're, your listener sits in Spain or in Germany and they want a German or a Spanish speaking person, it can be a little more difficult because we have less people. Uh, that speak these languages here. And usually there's a little premium if they're looking for other languages than English. Uh, but there are huge international communities here. So uh, it is absolutely possible to find a great uh, online marketing manager with other language skills than uh, than English. But if it's an, a native speaker, uh, I don't know whether any of your listeners ever looked into Cape Town. It is the creative hub here in, in Africa for a reason, because the atmosphere is extremely creative. People love Cape Town. A lot of young, innovative people are living here. And uh, so there is a, a big market. And other than in Europe, there is a, quite a bit of supply here for these profiles. Uh, so I would say if it's an English speaker, um, you know, everything included, if you take the salary of the English speaker, if you take the office space that we provide, the IT uh, support that we provide, the management support we provide, you know, we pay into the pension scheme, so whatever is necessary. They participate in 
our Christmas party. So they're really integrated in a proper working environment. Yeah, if you add all of that up, you know, the, the cost saving compared to taking on someone like this full time would be something like 30 to 50 percent. Now, if you then don't take on this person full time, but maybe only half time, you know, you can do the math and you can see that you can get make can get a real difference in your online marketing for a very reasonable amount of money. Yeah. And maybe to add to that, the Pareto principle tells us also that 20% of any team will deliver 80% of the results. So if you can find a high productive team for a much cheaper price point that delivers a lot of results for you, then it's a win-win situation. Um, you win on the productivity side of things and you win on the timing side of things. It's just a, a massive cost and time-saving um, task that you have onboarded in your business there. Before we come to the end of the coffee break today, Thorsten, is there a final thought that you want to leave our listeners with? Well, maybe maybe something that just came up to my uh, up to mind when you spoke about uh, that eighty percent of the team creates twenty percent of the results. What is also uh, you know very advantageous is that this person is not isolated here because you know this is we have a couple of online managers that work you know on different clients, but they obviously inspire each other. They talk to each other. So any learning that one has can easily be implemented for others, which means the learning curve is very very fast. And any new ideas, any new concepts will be shared. So you don't have, yeah. You know, imagine you've got an online manager sitting alone in his office, you know, at your place in Frankfurt. You know, where does he get his inspiration from? Now here, uh, the inspiration is continuously flowing, and new ideas and improvements are happening all the time. So that's another added uh, advantage, rather than having someone sitting there all by himself. Uh, I think that's the final thought. Uh, other than that, uh, oh, one more final thought. Uh, if you have someone working here in Cape Town, it's a great excuse to travel down here, have a fantastic time and make it uh, deducted from the tax man. So I think that is another advantage. Uh, we've got beautiful, beautiful, beautiful nature here, incredible wine farms. We've got two oceans and Taylor Mountain. So don't miss out on that opportunity as well. I think it's a it's a good point for anyone who's working hard to also think about that side of the business. Yeah, 100% true. Even in, if Torsten and I are biased because living for a long time <laughs> in Cape Town, it's definitely a place to visit there. Cool. Um, Torsten, I will put links to the services in the show notes. Then you're just one click away. And as I'm part of that business, big disclaimer here, um, you also can reach out to me directly and I will give you uh, some more information on how we can help you in using the 80-20 principle in your business and then on the other side outsourcing things to us to make your life easier thanks so much for your time today thank you very much klaus and hope to see you soon hey klaus here thank you for tuning in to another episode before we wrap things up i've got a couple of important points to share Firstly, if you have enjoyed today's episode and want to support the show, here's a simple way to do it. Help me out with that algorithm magic by liking, commenting, and subscribing on your favorite podcast app. And if you're feeling extra generous, leaving a rating would be great. Your support helps me bringing more impactful guests on the show, and it makes it easier for others to discover the podcast. Secondly, I want to talk about to all your business owners out there. Here's a question. Are you tired of juggling everything in your business while struggling with your marketing tasks? Fed up with hit and miss experiences of hiring freelancers or agencies that don't quite get your vision. But perhaps you're not ready to commit to a full-time in-house marketer just yet. Well, I've got a solution for you. Introducing our fractional marketing team. My team and I provide top-notch experienced marketing professionals to become an extension of your business. Not only will they save you up to 50% on cost compared to traditional hires, but they also take care of all this time-consuming, repetitive and complex marketing tasks that have been holding you back. And this way, you can concentrate on what truly matters, the core of your business. To learn more about how we can help you to scale up your online sales with a fractional team member, head over to our website, smart-ecommerce-marketing.com or reach out to me directly and I'll get you the details. You will find the links in the show notes. Thanks for being a part of our podcast community and remember your support means the world to me. Until next time, see you then.